Nina Salakwati, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you for speaking with us. Draw the link between the easing of the ban on the sale of alcohol and what you say could be a potential strain on casualty wards at our hospitals. Yeah, thanks for hosting us and uh, good, good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, you'll remember during this uh, lockdown and the uh, and the stop of selling of alcohol. The reports we have received on the ground is that our casualties was relatively quiet in terms of the amount of assaults, your, the, your level of MVAs coming in there. And uh, we are we were with a reasonable apprehension and fear that uh, this relaxation of the alcohol is going to escalate and just increase the numbers of our, uh, of our services in the casualty and uh, already we are strained with the taking care of the covered patients and so so in our viewers dinosa um the timing is wrong and it's not going to assist us um uh, obviously when people have taken alcohol the, the level of their judgment is impaired and they definitely will uh, lose focus and they're going to increase our numbers in the casualty, where we already have a serious shortage of staff mending these departments and so on in our surgical wards. That speaks to the question around alcohol, Kasim, but when you look at the general move on the 1st of June to a level three lockdown, now that the health department is saying that enough beds or a satisfactory number is now in place to deal with an influx of patients, are you as a nursing union convinced that the general move to a level three lockdown is the right one at this time? Uh, I would, I, I would, ha I will, I will hesitate to say it was a correct move because you must remember as we're going into the winter season, we're going to need a lot of beds. And amongst those beds, we might have to use the ICU beds and we don't have sufficient staff to manage those particular uh, sections. And that is just going to create more problems. You know, Kasim, often when we have the conversations around health workers, we talk about the delivery of PPE. We talk about beds, for example, where they'll be able to treat people. We talk about the arrival of the Cuban health experts who are going to assist. But I'm wondering, at a human level, how are DENOSA members feeling ahead of the expected peak in COVID-19 numbers? Uh, <laughs> We are not just limited and focused on the issue of PPEs. We are also worried with the number that are going to escalate. And then we don't have sufficient human resource to take care of those cases. And that has been our cry out there that increase and employ nurses, upskill nursing uh, to work in the critical care areas. All right, that Kasim, has been our concern, and oh, we are worried as the NOSA. Mm -hmm. Sorry, finish your point. We just had a bit of a delay on our Skype link. Kasim, are you through? Yes, I'm done, yes. Thank you so much. That was Denosa's acting general secretary, Kasim Lekwati, speaking to us from the capital, Pretoria. Thank you.